Hey everyone, my name is Tim Bryan. I like to make videos on sports analytics and data science. Uh, right now it's mostly focusing on this ESPN API for fantasy football data and also the NFL Python package for plotting NFL data. Uh, today we're going to go over how to plot current year fantasy football data. So I made a video already on how to get league history for your fantasy football league. So this would be something that's already passed. So for example, now you can pull 2021's data, no problem. Uh, getting data for the current year is a little different and a little more difficult. So um, this will be the final product of the project today. Um, you may be thinking it's easy enough to go to the internet browser, copy and paste uh, data from your fantasy football league into Excel and do it that way. But uh, you know, once you write this one time, you can do it every week automatically just by running the whole program. That's pretty convenient. And also it'll, it could serve as like a jumping off point for this is how you get ESPN data. And maybe in the future, you know, you wanna plot actual team uh, players on individual teams and, you know, go from there. So this is just kind of an introduction into how to use the API and I'll make videos in the future. So here's our final product. Um, the X axis is a given team score and the Y axis is that team's opponent score. Uh, so you can see Team C here, which happens to be my team, uh, was the highest scorer this week. And I can tell you that because it's the farthest right on the x-axis. And, you know, based on the position of the y-axis, my opponent scored a little bit above average. So it's centered at the average here. Zero is the average. My opponent scored a little bit above average. So I call this the unlucky loss slash tough win zone. So if you lost in this zone, it means you scored above average and you still lost. So that's kind of the name of the game in fantasy football. Sometimes that happens. Um, and if you won here, it was a tough win because you uh, played an opponent that scored above average as well. Uh, the opposite down here would be lucky win. So if you won down here, um, you scored below average and your opponent also did. So you kind of got lucky. Um, missed opportunity zone as well because your opponent scored below average and still lost. Uh, quadrant two is just teams that got crushed their opponent scored above average, they scored below average, and the opposite down here, they scored above average, opponent scored below average. So I think it's an interesting way to look at the data. So I'll show you how we make this from scratch using Python and a couple of different libraries. So uh, let's start with the dependencies. So first dependency is the request library to make calls to URLs and get data back. For us, we can use pandas and numpy, which are standard data science Python libraries. And lastly, uh, we're importing this config file. So I have a generic one, you know, this is my real one with the actual information in it, but uh, for the purposes of the video, I just created generic values. Uh, so the first two, these are cookies values. So for those of you who don't know what a cookie is, when you log into a website in your browser or even visit a website without logging in, uh, that browser is gonna store data in your computer or phone or whatever, so that it knows who you are more or less. So um, if you have a private fantasy football league uh, in the SPN, as most of us do, you're going to need these cookies so that it knows you've logged in and you have permission to view this data. So these are the two cookies values, and this is your league ID. So I'll show you how to get all three of these pretty quick. It's not too hard. So we're just going to go over here. Uh, let me close this. This is my fantasy football league. Um, you can be on any page in the league. It doesn't matter. Uh, just as long as you're logged in and in your league. Next, we're gonna right click in anywhere in the white space, hit inspect element. Um, and I'm in Safari right now, but this will work for any browser, any modern browser. So as I said, cookies are something that's stored in your browser. So we're gonna use this storage tab. And under ESPN.com, these are all the values, the cookies values that they're storing uh, on my computer. So I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to scroll down and show you the exact values because I don't want to get hacked. But, um, you know, if you scroll down, once you find, these are the exact names of what you're looking for. So ESPN underscore S2, paste that value in here. It's going to be an incredibly long uh, list of numbers and symbols and uh, uh, letters as well. And then the SWID. So a uh, little pro tip here. Your SWID is going to come in these curly brackets and just leave it in those curly brackets within the quotes. Uh, next, league ID, uh, even easier to get. If you go to your URL, um, in the URL, it'll say league ID equals, and you're just going to want to use that number. So uh, let's run this. 
Okay, um, we're defining league ID equals league ID. We've imported it, as I said, uh, year 2021, and we're gonna look at the first week of the year. So uh, same idea here, just defining our cookie parameters from the file we imported already, boom. Uh, next, this is our base URL. So uh, this is what ESPN Fantasy Football API documentation says to use. Uh, and I might add that the ESPN Fantasy Football API documentation is almost non-existent, so it's kind of tough troubleshooting, but uh, just takes a little bit of trial and error. So um, we're gonna input our year using an F string. We're gonna input our year variable and our league ID. And this is what I mentioned before about um, the reusability of this program. Every time you come in, if you wanna make that visualization every week, all you have to do is adjust this week value. So next week I'll come in, I'll make this two, I'll rerun everything and it'll automatically it'll switch everything over for me to week two. So it's pretty nice, right at once and you're done. All right, here's a, this is a somewhat complicated syntax. So <clears throat> we're gonna make two requests to this URL. Um, ESPN API has a couple of different views. The matchup view, which is two teams um, and their scores. Uh, the matchup view does not have team names. It has an ID. So we're gonna need to use the team view to join on this ID and if we want to get our actual team names rather than just a random number. So that's how we're doing that. Um, we're gonna use a request.get function. We're getting, we're using a get request on this URL we defined up here. Um, and then parameters in this dictionary type data, uh, data structure. Uh, our league ID is league ID. Our season ID is year. Matchup period is week. And it's matchup view. And then we're passing in our cookies values as well. So just copy this format exactly and it shouldn't have any problems. I'll run this. Um, next, we're going to transform the response we get from this uh, URL to a JSON. So. Uh, I'm not going to print it out, but I recommend that everyone does print out the JSON just to see, like, get a look at how complicated this data structure is and how, how plentiful, how uh, robust the data is in here. Um, we're going to take our JSON and using this very convenient JSON normalize function, we're going to normalize our JSON into a, a, a pandas data frame, which is kind of like a table. So. Um, we're going to take the top level of our matchup JSON, which the top level in this case is schedule, and the team uh, team JSON, the top level is teams. So, boom. Um, next, we're just going to specify which columns we actually care about. So, that's what these here are. The, uh, the keys in this dictionary are what's in our... Uh, what's in our uh, Pandas data frame right now. So this is the column name right now. We're just gonna change it from, you know, matchup period ID to week, so on and so forth, team one and team score, uh, instead of a home and away. Home and away is somewhat irrelevant for fantasy football, uh, unless you have a strange league. Um, from our team data frame, uh, ID is ID. So that's what we're gonna be joining. We're gonna be joining ID on team one and team two to get the team names, so. Um, the reason these are in two different uh, spots is I'm sure anyone that plays fantasy football on ESPN knows what I'm talking about here. Uh, they have you name your team in two different uh, text boxes. They're expecting you to choose a location for your team, like Chicago Bears or something. Uh, nobody actually does that, but you have to, um, it prints out the name in two different columns. So that's why we do it like this. Um, <clears throat> Once we define the names we want, we're gonna re-index on those names and rename the columns to those names as well. So for both the matchup and team data. Run that. Uh, this next part, this next line right here is kind of optional. Um, I like to add another column to the data frame uh, for whether it's a regular season game or a playoff game, uh, for fantasy football that is. So anything after week 13 in my league is a playoff game. And so that's what this line is doing, is defining what type of game it is. And this is concatenating the two name columns, as I said above, to get the full team name. And then we're gonna filter just on the ID and team name. That's all we really care about for the team data frame, at least. And I'm not gonna go super in depth here. Pretty much what we're doing is we're joining our, our, uh, our team data frame and our matchup data frame on that ID, that team ID column. Um, eventually we're gonna drop that ID column, which right now is team one, 
we'll replace it with uh, name one and name two to get the team name. So I'll run these. <clears throat> Lastly, we're only concerned with one week of data. So we define the week variable above. Uh, in this case, it's week one, but we're going to filter our data frame just to where uh, the week column equals our week variable. I'm uh, renaming all the team names to generic team names for obvious reasons. Uh, and I'll print this out and we'll see uh, what our data looks like. So you're going to get a warning here that you're slicing a copy of your data frame, but we can just ignore that. So this is the final result. I know it may seem simple. You know, this is very uh, basic data structure here and there's only five rows. But, um, you know, if you print out those JSON uh, that we made above along the way, you'll just see how complex this is. Um, so anyway. Next, we're going to split these into four different data frames. And I'll tell you why we're doing that is because, you know, when we when you saw the chart uh, at the beginning, there were 10 data points on that chart. But right here, you can see there's only five uh, rows because each team, uh, each matchup is two teams. So <clears throat> we pretty much need to get the columns, uh, get the rows where the away team, and in this case, that would be name one, um, is winning and losing, and then we just flip it the other way. So um, each matchup, each team gets a matchup, and then that team that they're playing also gets a matchup on the other side. So that's why we do that. Um, so we're going to get the uh, data frame where the away team's winning, the away team's losing, and then the opposite where the home team's winning and the home team's losing. I think this will make more sense when we actually plot this data. Um, so I like to look at uh, relative scores. I think it reveals a little bit more um, when you're looking at the uh, creating visualizations. So uh, we're going to calculate the average score for this week. And the way we do that, is we're just going to sum up score one and score two, and then divide by the number of teams in my league, which is 10. So if you have 12 or eight, you may want to adjust this number. Um, here's the final result. That's our average score. And that's what we're going to plot against. That'll be the zero on each axis. All right, let's get into plotting it. So <clears throat> we're going to define the figure size. Uh, 12 by 12, I think, is good for this visualization. We're going to create a subplot to plot our data on. And now we're going to plot our data. So <clears throat> we're first going to plot the away win, uh, the away win data frame. So that the x value here would be score one, the difference between score one and the average. And the y value, which is the opponent's score, is score two minus the average. So we do that for both the wins and losses. The only difference here is um, in the keyword arguments. So I like to uh, differentiate between wins and losses. So the wins get squares that are green. The X's get, uh, the, lose, the losers get X's that are red. And then we just do the opposite. So um, for the home teams, uh, which are score two, the X value is score two minus average and the opponent's score is score one minus the average. We'll do the same thing, differentiating between wins and losses here. Um, so next we're going to do, uh, again, you want to change this to 12 or 8 if your team is that uh, league is that size. But we're going to loop through each name in, for the certain for however many number of teams there are. And we're going to annotate with the team name. So we do this for each one. Um, the reason we put these in try and accept clauses is because, uh, you know, like the away win data frame, I know for a fact only has one value in it. There's only one away team that won this week for whatever reason. Um, so that's why we do that. So we're gonna try it for the maximum the number of uh, teams in the league. And the X and Y values are the same as what we defined up here. So we're gonna put that, annotate the team name right on that point uh, for each data frame we got here. Um, I need to make this dynamic, but we're just going to define our X and Y axis limits here. Um, this right here is so that uh, we get the kind of like a cross shaped um, graph where we get each each of the four quadrants. That's how you do this is you're going to define a spine on your axis. Um, next, we're just going to annotate. I like to annotate these quadrants to um, illustrate whether it's an unlucky loss or a lucky win, that kind of thing. Uh, this is the name of my team, uh, my league. So feel free to adjust that. Uh, let me adjust this as well to make it dynamic. So we're going to put our week variable in here. And then let's just print this out and get a look. 
So there we go. This is our final result. Um, yeah, so I think it's a good way to look at it. You know, you can see how your team did versus the average and how you stack up against the opponents. So if you liked it, let me know. Uh, if you have any issues running the code, let me know as well. I can try and help you out. So thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.